Hello and welcome along to another EFL manager special from the Honest Football Podcast. I'm joined by Craig as always and we're going to have to try very hard to make this non-identical to the Charlton one a couple of days ago, particularly in terms of not having similar thoughts on the man coming in because I think it's going to echo our thoughts on the Charlton manager, Nigel Atkins. But of course, Portsmouth is the reason we're back. They have appointed Danny Cowley and Nicky Cowley as assistant till the end of the season. And I think this, in contrast to the Charlton one, is one of the worst kept secrets in football because we've been waiting on tenterhooks for about three days now. But of course, Craig, we always start with the outgoing manager and that is Kenny Jackett, who had a sustained spell at the club. OK, it didn't end particularly well with a defeat at Wembley on the final Saturday in charge. But over the time, he's had a 50% win ratio there. He has done a decent job. They've won the EFL trophy. But is it just the case, Craig, that aside of his general form in the biggest games is where they didn't turn up. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, I think where he obviously win, win percentage is fine, but I think Portsmouth's main uh, goal was to get into the championship. Yeah. There were obviously teams that were better than them, um, them at every, every step of the way. Obviously your Lutons, your Barnsley's, your, your Coventry's and your Rotherham's. So it's all great winning the EFL trophy, but, Obviously, Portsmouth's aim is to bounce back straight into the championship, and obviously they haven't done that. They've been in League One now three, four seasons. So similar to some of the stuff in that level club, they want to be obviously a big club in the League One, like the Charlton's and Ipswiches and Sunderland's. But obviously, yeah, they want to be back in the championship, and they haven't done that. No, it's fair enough. And obviously, like we mentioned, playoff heartache. Even the cup final at Wembley twice. at the week, twice. yeah, twice, and even the cup final at the weekend, the biggest games. There's not really been... It's not the fact that there wasn't a great performance. It's that they got outfought by Salford City at the weekend. With respect to team from a lower league in the final, you would expect that to be the, the sort of occasion where the players pump their chests out. So I guess my second question to you before we move on to the new man is, is Kenny Jackett fully to blame or have the players got to take a bit of responsibility for this one? Yeah, the players have got to take responsibility. They have to. Because obviously they're playing the game. Um, obviously it's close enough to similar players from last season and probably the season so, and, and I think you kind of spot on you when it comes to the big games that, that they're not there. Obviously, yeah, okay, they, they won the trophy. But watching the game on Saturday, it just felt like they just run out of ideas. And and obviously, Salford are obviously a new EFL team. Well, in the last season they got cancelled, but I just felt they were a bit just gutless and toothless. And you, and you look at their run at the moment in the league, for, like, well, like, like I think the last four games were four straight defeats. So, I think they just ran out of ideas. Yeah, I think that that's a fair point to make. And I think in the end, I think a lot of Portsmouth fans also seem to feel that Kenny Jackett had run his course. So perhaps it was a good time for the part in other ways. And of course, although we have to reflect on the old man, the big news is that Danny Cowley, after three days of very poorly kept rumours, has come in alongside his brother, Nicky. And this is an appointment that a lot of Portsmouth fans are excited about. And getting your initial reaction, Craig, can you understand why? Yeah, he's, he's one of those uh, pl- uh, managers that we've linked all season, even though he's always on Pyramid Sky Sports News at the same time while we record these <laughs> manager specials. Who are we going to predict into the next guy? Uh, so, yeah, I think it's, it's a good appointment. Obviously, he's done, he done very, very well at Lincoln. Uh, obviously, got him from National League to League One. I thought he'd done an okay job at Huddersfield. Obviously, whatever happened off the field has happened off the field, and that's, that's why he, obviously, he left there. But his main aim was to keep Huntsville in the championship and he'd done that. So I think what Portsmouth fans have got to be careful is obviously I'm not doubting Danny Cowley. I think he's, I think he's a good coach. I really do. But he hasn't taken the team up to the championship. He obviously had League one, uh, National League, League One, uh, so National League, League Two, League One, but he's not had a League One to the championship. He obviously got the job in the championship. So it's excitement. I'm, I'm quite surprised it's only to the end of the season, but no, I'm, I'm not going to be surprised if he takes it next season, that he'll get a two-year deal or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's looking good for Portsmouth, but obviously we'll get to the fixtures in a minute and obviously where they are on the table. So, like, obviously beforehand, it, being 10th place, yes, it is tight, but being Portsmouth to be 10th is uh, unacceptable. Yeah, completely agree. But, we, I mean, we mentioned in the chart one, and we will do again, just how tight League One is this year. It is effectively the new championship this season. But, as you mentioned, the Cowley brothers come in with that great experience. Over 50% win ratio at Concord Rangers, nearly 50% at Braintree, two promotions at Lincoln to take them to League One level. And 
he also won an EFL trophy in there as well. Let's not forget, just so they can continue the tradition at Pompey. But you talk about a Huddersfield role, which is obviously where he was last. He joined the side in the bottom three of the championship in disarray after coming down from the, the Premier League the season before. And he kept them up. And as you mentioned, he only got sacked for style of football or off the pitch situations. So given his job on the pitch, do you think this is another EFL chairman masterstroke? Because we said it about Charlton with Nigel Atkins. Do you feel the same with Danny Cowley? This is the hard one because it's only to the end of the season. Obviously, Portsmouth fans, regardless, they're going to say we want promotion, regardless yeah. of where they are. Their, their aim is to get promoted. I think it's a good point. I mean, different style of football to what Kenny Jackie had. Yeah. Well, as I said, I think they ran out of ideas on the style of, on the style of football that Kenny Jackie played. So obviously, now they're going to bring something different. Would it get uh, them over the line? Who knows? But looking at their fixtures, why not run that good run? Yeah, we'll come to them in a minute because it's uh, an interesting run and very contrasting to the one we did the other day. But if we talk about Danny Cowley in particular, because you mentioned it's only till the end of the season. And interestingly, it's as head coach as well, which is something we always talk about, the stipulation between manager and that. But I think we're saying that, like a lot of clubs post-pandemic, it's just about the financial security of not committing to a long deal, isn't it? I mean, we talked about, I guess, Nigel Pearson at Bristol City. There's no way that these managers or these head coaches aren't going to be in place next season. Regardless of how this season finishes, surely Danny Cowley will be there at the start of next year. Yeah, I, I, I fully expect that to happen. Uh, I think a coach like uh, someone like Danny Cowley is a young coach. He wouldn't want to take a deal to in the season. He want to he want to build his team. I think more the like, experienced managers will want to take a deal to in the season and then go from there. But so, I, I I generally think it's it's the safe way to say. Well, obviously you're going to have it in the season, but we know you're going to have it. We're going to give you a new deal come the summer. I think regardless of where they finish, whether it's in the championship or in League One, I think they he's going to get a two year deal. I think so. Yeah, I said, it is a good appointment. Yeah, completely agree. And obviously it puts Danny Cowley and, and Nicky in a good position as well, because if they do get promoted, they'll be doubling their wage very quickly, I would imagine, or at least asking for it. But we've mentioned he's got a brilliant win percentage everywhere. We mentioned that he spent a sustained period building clubs, particularly Concord at first and Lincoln more recently. And that bodes pretty well for Pompey, because you mentioned they're in 10th place, perhaps a disappointing position after four straight defeats. But we talked about this the other day again three points off the playoffs with two games in hand. And because League One is so scattered this year, not just in points, but the terms of the number of fixtures played, it does leave the end of the season really open, doesn't it? Yeah. If they get on that run, they can obviously get back up there. But the thing is, they've got to win those games. The teams are obviously in there. I'll say, like, for example, Charlton and Lincoln, for example, they've got their points already in the bag. So they can do it, but obviously they've got to win the game. So I think Porter fans got to be a bit cautious on that. Saying, yeah, we've got a game plan, but you've got to win those games. And if you don't win those games, you're not going to make it into the playoffs. And obviously, there's other teams around who also played the same amount of games as well, like your Oxford and uh, Ipswich, for example. They both played 34. So, and obviously, they're a couple of points ahead. So, obviously, you're also relying on results going against the other teams as well. Yeah. And I guess in one of the few contrasts to the Charlton one the other day is that there we talked about the fact they've got to play almost all of the teams around them at the top of the table. And if they beat them, obviously, it's in their own hands. Now, you could argue Portsmouth's running is either better or completely the opposite because they can't do that. But bar their first game against Ipswich tomorrow, as we're recording this, they are not playing any other sides in the top 12 of the league, in the top half. I mean, with 10 games to go or 11 games as it will be then, that's astonishing really, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, it's very rare to see to have pretty much the bottom half of uh, the, the league in your final, like you, you're running, especially the last 10 games. Yeah. But... What you've got to remember is these these teams down at the bottom also going to fight for their lives as well. Yeah. Rochdale, obviously near the bottom. Wigan, uh, Burn Alvin on an incredible run on the Jimmy Boy <laughs> Hasselbank. And obviously we did do a manager special on him and he said he will struggle and he has not done that at all. I said he'd um, keep them up. <laughs> he, <laughs> well, yeah, but Burton were mild at the time, but fair <laughs> play to him. But obviously, yeah, Bristol Rovers, AC London and Swindon all fighting to stay in the division anyway. So they're not easy games when... Uh, we say they're easy games, but they're not easy games because obviously they're fighting for something, so it, it's going to be tough than anything. Yeah, absolutely. And as, as we've mentioned before, and as we can mention again now, virtually every team in the League One is fighting for something. A real interesting finish that Portsmouth have got. But you know what's coming next, Craig? I'm going to ask you the hard questions and the ones that are going to make us have egg on our face inevitably at the end of the season. So we've already discussed that we think it's a good appointment, but do you think it's an appointment that could lead Portsmouth into the playoffs? 
or even potentially to promotion? What do you see for the rest of the season from this Portsmouth team? And what should the fans expect? Uh, uh, fans expectation is going to be high anyway. I think, I think pretty much all three of us had them in the top six anyway, especially the playoffs. They might sneak in. They need to go on that run. So it'd be interesting the next two, three games, obviously when they're playing catch up, see how they get on. But I don't, th- I don't think they'll get promotion this season. And the same thing with Charlton. I said about Charlton, I think it'd be good for the next season rather than this season to actually go up. So, uh, I think there's obviously there's better teams around at the moment. I think they need to find out their their style. They've got great players. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't see I don't see promotion this season. I'm afraid. No, no. I guess we're sort of putting ourselves in a spot of bother, really, because at least one or two of us have said this now about Charlton, about Ipswich, about Sunderland under Lee Johnson, and about Pompey that they could be real contenders next year if they don't go up this season. They're the four biggest clubs. No disrespect. I think they're probably the four biggest clubs. I'm probably miss, I'm probably forgetting some uh, another team there. But when you look at it, they're the four biggest clubs in there, and they've all done manager specials. So <laughs> it, and it makes it really hard for us to predict this season. Yeah, and to be fair, it's made it very hard to get promoted out of League One because you've got massive sides that have all made very good managerial appointments. And I guess we've we've got to look at it for the rest of the season. If they don't make the top six this year, or if they sneak in, like you say, they might and don't get promoted. What do you see for next season? I guess we've said we probably see Danny Cowley and the Cowley brothers in charge. But do we see a real promotion race for Portsmouth? Do we see them competing for the top two? What do you see for the future? Danny Cowley would want to build something. Uh, I, I don't see it being a, a two-month project for him. He want to build something. So I, I, I said earlier, I, I do expect them to be there next season. And I think they'll be, they'll be right up there. I really do. And it obviously depends who comes down from the championship as well. So I, 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 I and the same way with Charlton. If Charlton don't go up, I really, I really expect them to go up, like be up there next season. So I, I think the future does look good for Portsmouth. Just got to be patient. But it does look good. I think it looked good for next season. I completely agree with you, which, as we've discussed before, is probably a worrying sign. I don't mm-hmm. think Portsmouth will go up this season, though I do think they'll probably make the top six. But I would just encourage Pompey fans just to be patient and cautious and give them time next year because we've seen at other clubs, when they're given time to build momentum, to get on a roll and shape their own squad, they play to their style, they work their backsides off for their team. And like they did at Lincoln, they actually brought the whole town and a community together as well, which is something incredibly important, particularly with a club like Portsmouth and can lead to unbelievable things. So rather suspiciously, we're in complete agreement that probably not quite this year, even if it's the top six, but next year, definitely up there and competing for the top two. If you did enjoy this episode, please do put a thumbs up on the video. If you're a Portsmouth fan, let us know what you think of the Cowley's appointment down below. Are you worried that it's perhaps only till the end of the season or are you looking forward to a longer future with them? If you haven't already, subscribe down below for regular content from the Honest Football Podcast. As we mentioned throughout, we've covered most of the big League One clubs, so you can catch up with their manager specials in the eye above. And our latest championship predictions for this weekend's fixtures are up there too. A massive thank you to Craig for joining me as always. You can follow us over on Twitter at Honest Football 3. And hopefully we'll see you next time.